Fat Nwigwe. I hope I'm saying their last name correctly. Um, apparently, they're musicians. I only know that one Try Jesus song by them. I'm pretty sure if they have stands, other people. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry for not knowing their music ahead of time. Um, but they did like an interview last year and he was rejecting her the whole time and like talking down to her. And she was telling the story about how they got together, how they got married. And he said multiple times, no, you wanted me. You wore me down. I didn't want you. Like, it was really aggressive about it, right? And I saw that too, yeah. So you know what I'm talking about now, right? Yeah. So, and I remember as I was trying to come up with topics earlier today, I saw new, like, literally as recent as yesterday, people are still, like, doing video essays and responses to that interview. So I'm just fascinated by the way people responded to it. So that's actually gonna be my very first question is what about that situation triggered people so deeply? And why is it still something that's being spoken about like in the zeitgeist of black culture a whole year later, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see what comes up. Drop some scales, you guys. I know y'all capable. I see all them pink flowers. And I'm not hating necessarily. I'm just saying. <laughs> you could put as just as many scales in the comments <laughs> as you see pink flowers. And also, I if I do say so myself, me and my sister are reading our asses off tonight. And so if you are entertained, if you like what you're hearing, Definitely leave us a love offering. Show your appreciation that way. All righty. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. I'm going to pull a clarifier over one of these cards. Um, but the reason why people feel triggered and the word triggered is completely correct. People feel triggered by this because they feel like what they witnessed is a red flag about relationships that have fallen apart for them. And they almost feel a need to want to save her from something. Clarify this tower card. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the judgment is coming from a place of like, no girl, don't do it. Right. Um, we have the tower clarified by judgment, justice, and the high priestess in the first row. So again, that tower card, it, it's a fear that this is not a stable situation. It's a fear that she's not protected and that things are going to go bad in a way that causes chaos for her. That's clarified by the judgment card, which is talking about how they have a feeling that um, are the, the, the public when they see these clips, when they see this clip over and over again, they feel like she's not using her proper judgment, right? And so watching, when you watch somebody who's not using their proper judgment and you feel like you know what the outcome is gonna be, it causes like an, a discomfort, a sense of panic, right? Um, we have the justice card. I don't think that they, I don't, I honestly don't think that they have a bad marriage. I don't. I really don't. Um, the justice is about getting back what you put in, getting justice in the situation based on your actions. So they actually put a lot of work into their marriage. Um, but again, people don't see that. What they see was what they see or what they saw was a potentially disruptive situation. Um, the high priestess is intuition. It's connection with spirit. It's a sen deep sense of knowing because you're in tune and they're really in tune with each other. Um, but again, it's like the intuition of the public is in combat with what they know to be true about their situation, right? Bottom row, we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, and the Ace of Cups. Again, they're in this for the long haul. They're not going anywhere. Um, they really do love each other. In fact, a huge part of what led them to get married is that they can see future and the building, the leaving behind of a legacy with one another. So even though the public is triggered by what took place, there's this whole other 
bigger life, bigger commitment, bigger, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Responsibility that they feel weighted to. So, but this does keep them up at night. They've lost sleep over this. They don't like the fact that that's a narrative around them in their marriage, right? We end with the Ace of Cups. So she's gotten a lot of love based on what happens, but she's also embarrassed by it, right? So it's like, she's had a lot of favorable things said about her and a lot of outpouring from other women around her, but she's embarrassed because she feels like she don't need it. She feels like she was being severely misread. So short answer in term, actually I'm gonna pull up, I feel like there's something else I need to understand about this Ace of Cups, give me a moment. Clarify the Ace of Cups for me. Okay. I'm seeing this bottom row a little differently now. Yes, they have this marriage that's going to it for them they're not going anywhere they're deeply committed to their legacy they're deeply committed to the tenets that led them to marry one another right a lot of the people that see this and that watch this they want that for themselves so to see a couple that they know has this in order and to feel like in order to have that for themselves they have to compromise or deal with what they saw as a disrespect, it makes them really uncomfortable, right? Does that make sense? So part of the reason why the public was so triggered is that people don't like the idea of if I'm gonna have marriage where there's legacy built into it, I have to deal with like masculine disrespect. Does that make sense? We end with the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Cups is clarified by the Four of Pentacles. So the impact that this is having is that people who are already sensitive about love use this as justification to not be vulnerable, to be restricted, to not try, right? Because if, if again, if you have wounds around love and you see something like that, then you can automatically go to, well, I'm not trying to put myself out there for no man because what if they disrespect me? Like, ah, 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 right? So that's a huge part of the reason why the public is triggered. Even though this was just a really specific incident in which they just did not come off well, the reason why people are using this and seeing this as representation of their entire connection is because it touches on, which is what triggers are, it touches on a wound or a fear that a lot of particularly black women, women of color have about having to compromise self in order to get commitment. So that's interesting. Now, my next question is, I wonder if Toby has any regret around how he came off in the interview. And if so, how does that show up for him? How has that shown up for him in the last year? Thank you, Isis, for dropping me some scales. I would like other people to drop me some scales too. Drop some scales, y'all. <laughs> Show me that you're with me. Show me that you're Where's everybody at? They're so quiet tonight. I don't know. They are really being stingy with the scales. The emojis are free, y'all. What y'all doing? <laughs> Show some love. Does Toby have any regret around how he came off and the things that he said? It's inspired him to work on his communication. Inshallah, yes. We, that's all we can really ask for people <laughs> <laughs> is that they realize that they didn't do the best and that they do better, right? Um, in the first row, we have the Four of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles. Who is this person putting porn things in our... Um, Excuse me. Life, sir. I'm having to block the same accounts over and over again because they keep... Uh. 
weird links. Oh, I'm seeing it now. Yeah, that is weird. So I can't get no, I can't get no scale emojis, but y'all gonna let this weirdo come in here and harass us. I see how y'all are. I see how y'all are. See, that's why we took so long to come back. Y'all don't appreciate. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all. But yeah, we have the Four of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Nine of Pentacles. Um, Four of Cups is an energy of dissatisfaction, um, being sad about something that didn't work out and kind of having to sit in the uncomfortable feelings. It's uncomfortable feelings you can't really want to run away from, right? You just have to kind of fixate on what went on, what took place in the past so that you can kind of learn from it, right? So he was deeply uncomfortable with the response <laughs> and the way he came off. And he was forced to have to sit with the reality of how he spoke to her and what that meant, right? Um, Eight of Pentacles, training and refinement. He took the feedback, he incorporated it into his behavior um, because he cares about having a, a prosperous marriage with her, but he also cares about the way he shows up as a husband, right? I'm, why am I doing this? <laughs> I'm trying to hold it one hand. So again, he did the work to fix what was going on because he didn't like the representation it had of him, him as a man, right? Um, he is very traditionally masculine, very, very prideful. And even though he cared about how it meant in the context of the marriage, he didn't like the way that it made him look as a man, the, made, the way that it re, um, misrepresented him as a man. Um, his ability to show up in the world as a husband and father in a really particular way is literally wealth to him. It means so much to him. So for him, it was about, okay, I got to sit with what I did so I can really figure out how it is that I came off because I don't want to have another situation like this. Um, I truly don't get that he meant to hurt her, but his tongue and being too playful had been an issue in the past. And this was something that, unfortunately, it had to happen in this kind of big, embarrassing way in order to even get him to acknowledge. Because I think he minimized it up until then, right? I think a huge part of their relationship is very playful. Like, you know those, those couples that call each other ugly? They'll be like, I love you, ugly. <laughs> like, I think that's a part of their relationship. It's a, it's a like... It's a very playful, like school ground. I'm a dig, yeah. I'm a dig at you a little bit, but I think that in the past he had taken it too far because, again, this is still a woman, right? And even if they have a friendship, it still needs to be carried with a certain amount of grace. So this ended up being a straw that broke the camel's back around a conversation that they had been having a lot that he couldn't fully recognize until he had a public embarrassment and was in a situation where he had to kind of reinvent himself, right? Had to kind of reestablish himself. So the past year has been about him kind of taking inventory and having a new start around his public persona in a way that has been good for him. It's actually opened up opportunities for him too, even though that was not the intention. Um, I think having to have conversations um, do follow up interviews, et cetera, et cetera, has actually opened them up not only to a new audience, but opened him up to op new opportunities in ways that he wasn't really planning for. So, yeah, he 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 did have. I don't know if regret is the right word, but he didn't like the way that it made him look as a man, um, and it forced him to kind of grapple with some things that he probably that not probably, but that he'd been dismissive of in terms of his communication in the past. And he's done better going forward, which is all that people can really ask for in these kind of situations, right? Um, now I wanna see how, and I hate calling this woman fat, I really do. Um, I do, but that's her nickname, that's what she's taking on, so. Um, you, ain't I, had, you, you, you ain't too. had a childhood nickname, Soleil? What was your, huh? childhood, what was your childhood nickname? Chubby Cheeks. <laughs> You remember that. See, you did that on purpose. You ain't. <laughs> I'll tell them mine too to make it better. They used to call me Cookie. They used to call me Cookie or Bama. My, child, my childhood nickname was Chubby Cheeks. And if I'm out in public and the right elder walks across me, they will still, in my 
in my grown age will still call me chubby G. Mm-hmm. Being a grown woman, they still pull them cards. Mm-hmm. But let's see what um comes up in terms of how fat has felt over the last year, how this situation made her feel. So, so what can you tell us about Fat's feelings in the interview and the ways in which the public has responded to the retelling of the story around how they got together? Y'all, I'm so living with a teenager is interesting because I'm sitting here shuffling and I just hear snacks being opened. In my room. <laughs> <laughs> he said he don't care. Okay, he's like, I don't care that you on the on the internet talking to these people. I need my midnight snack. <laughs> I, I need some pretzels. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so, and this is fair. So in the first row, we see, I be saying stuff like I'm talking to an exact person, sorry. <laughs> but um, in the first row, I get that it it embarrassed her. It really, really embarrassed her. Um, it caused her to really reflect over whether or not her understanding of their marriage was true. So it, it caused a little bit of confusion of her, but it caused her to spend a lot of time in the mind, right? Like yeah. really reflecting on, okay, I know the vision we have for our marriage. I know the plan we have for our future. Like I know what I committed to, but people aren't talking about me that way. And it's causing me to feel not only alone, but conflicted, right? Um, not conflicted in terms of whether or not she was going to leave the marriage, but conflicted around whether or not she should even take the risk of having these public conversations anymore, right? So she went through a period of time where she was really considering not just doing any more interviews because of the amount of embarrassment and indecision and confusion that it put on her. She actually held back from doing interviews for quite a long time, according to this Four of Swords, this being a card of rest and recuperation. So it caused her to retreat. It caused her to want to hide from the public. Um, it caused her to be just very confused and uncomfortable with the fact that people had such a different understanding of her relationship than how she personally experiences it. And that made her deeply uncomfortable. Um, in the second row, we have the Six of Pentacles, the Sun card, and the Queen of Cups. Um, he spent a lot of time spoiling on her and doting on her, which is not very typical of him. Um, so that helped a lot in her being able to, you know, kind of recover from the embarrassment, kind of get tapped back into their understandings of what they had in store for their marriage, right? Um, it helped her regain her confidence, sun card, vitality, um, just pride. It really made her feel like, okay, well, I'm, I didn't make the right, I didn't make the wrong choice. And as long as I get to feel this way, I don't really care about what other people think, right? So I think, I get the impression that right now, she's probably the most secure in just deli not deliberate, like the most comfortable in her marriage in terms of feeling loved and doted on. But a lot of that has to come from his own personal evolution, which I talked about in the last spread, and him showing up in a way that's different, like very generous, very pouring over her. Um, she feels very taken care of right now, very taken care of and spoiled. Um, very able. She feels like her nurturing is being reciprocated in a way that's keeping her very like just nourished emotionally. Um, her cup is full and she she's also just deeply proud of she again going back to when it first happened a lot of concern about what people have to say but because her husband has been pouring the energy into her that he has, and her children get to see her get loved on in a particular way. She's like, well, I don't really care because like my, my lived experience and what my babies get to see is me being loved on by a husband who really does care about me, right? So it's been an up and down for her since the interview. 
Um, those first few months were really, really rocky and made her feel really, really judged. But now she's at a space where it's like, okay, well, it was just a bad moment. And if people are going to judge my entire relationship off of a bad moment, you know, that's their stuff because I know what I live every day. I know what I feel every day, right? I want to, I have one last question. <laughs> one last question. Because we know it's one thing how you experience your relationship, but we all know that our close friends and family have opinions and concerns and stuff. So I want to know what people in their inner circle have to say. I also want to get some more scale emojis in the comments because hey. we still have people here and I see all kind of coffins and laughing faces. I don't, I don't know what the laughing face emoji is for. I know what the scale emoji is for and the scale <laughs> emoji gives me energy. And if I'm on here reading my ass off for free, the least that y'all can do is drop a couple scales. Come on now, don't be stingy with those scales. The emojis are free, y'all. Show me some love. Absolutely. How do the people around them in their immediate circle feel about their relationship? What do they see? Exactly, Isis. If I can make you laugh, you can drop a scale. Come on now. I'm screaming. The scale is one button. LOL is three. Now, come on now. Give me a scale. Like, come on. Um, hold on a second. Queen of five or six of swords. I think that Toby is obstinate. Like, it's it's not just his wife. Like, he's just, he's got a hard-headed ass energy, right? Um, so the people around them know that he loves her, right? And they know that this is a beautiful family. They know that this is a family that's gonna be together forever. But there are people, <laughs> it, it's like the energy that I'm getting from this spread is like they look at the relationship and they're like, girl, it couldn't be me. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing where it's like they recognize that there's love there, but there's just a lot about his energy and his demands that are tough to deal with. Um, so it's like, OK, we get that you guys love each other, but damn, we feel bad for her kind of thing, you know? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Why are you so funny? <laughs> I'm just, I'm literally reading what the cards have to say. Um, I'm going to go back to the card that jumped out while I was shuffling because I feel like I got to get through the rest of the spread for this card to make sense. But in the first row, we have the Two of Cups, the Fool, the Six of Swords, clarified by the Knight of Swords, and the Queen of Wands. Now, Two of Cups is union. It's partnership in which there's reciprocity, right? So people feel like they represent a yin and yang kind of energy, right? So they fit and pour into each other in a way that makes sense for not just a marriage, but any kind of partnership, even a business relationship, right? Um, now, this is, the, this is not the tarot definition of the fool, the way this is showing up. This is the little, literal fool. Like, there's things that she deals with and puts up from him where people are like, you got to be a fucking fool to deal with this, right? But then, again, in the traditional sense, it's like, okay, she knows that in the, they have goals. They have something that they're striving towards in terms of their connection in this earthly realm. So if she has to, because that's part of the fool card. It's you taking risks that may make you look foolish to other people. So she knows that there are moments where she looks foolish in this marriage. But again, she doesn't care because she's committed to the deeper partnership and the deeper journey that they're on together. Um, he has a temper. He don't know how to talk to people. Um, and he's very selfish. 
Knight of Wands. And so this is over the Six of Swords, right? Which is leaving things behind, going into a future that's better. Um, there are people around them in their circle that feels like <laughs> if he wanted to, she would be fine without him. She would find somebody equally as good or maybe even better, right? And the reasons that they feel that way is that they feel that he is very impulsive while being very, he tunnel visions. He can only see the things that he wants, right? Knight of Swords, they're great executors, right? They are great at getting the job done. They hit their marks. They're the most skillful soldiers, but they don't care who they damage or who they fuck up in the process of being, of executing their goals, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, he's great at what he does. Um, and he's well recognized for what he does. But the way that he treats people in the process of getting his shit done is very fucked up. He's coming up as the queen of wands. Now, understand there's a reason why he did not come up as the king. <laughs> because even though he is very charismatic, there's something very emotionally manipulative about his charisma, right? So again, that that knight of wands, knight of swords married with the queen of wands energy where there's like a lot of charisma but a tendency to be emotionally manipulative he's not the kindest person to deal with so not only is he somewhat verbally abusive kind of dismissive overbearing he's really good at manipulating people into thinking that it's their fault like he's very like you know how some people naturally just gaslight like they don't even know they're doing it yeah i can he, see that he's very much in that energy. Um, they've seen her cry. They've seen her have heartbroken moments over his actions. Like they've seen her put up with a lot. Um, so it's, it's interesting because it's like, he's not hurting her, but he hurts her feelings quite often. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, again, they know there's a lot of love and joy working with them. Their community feels like family. So they have staff and people that they work with that are probably never going to go anywhere. There's a lot of joy surrounding them. Um, we end with the justice card. So there's hope that, and they have seen him engage in maturation a little bit, but there's a lot of hope that he can do more because even though they are successful, he could be more successful if he gets these character issues under wraps, right? Um, that's Six of Swords, Knight of Wands, no, I'm sorry, Knight of Swords, uh, Queen of Cup, Queen of Wands. Why am I fucking cards? That bundle of cards that we're talking about his attitude problem <laughs> is right over this one. So what they are witnessing is like, okay, yes, this shit is annoying to us, but we also know for a fact that you could have been further along in terms of your career, in terms of your life's path if you were able to get over this character shit. But people know that they're not going anywhere because the road ahead of them is so clear and there is so much for them to accomplish in the future. Like their future together as a couple, as entertainers is hella bright. So the way that I would summarize this is that people see egregious behavior in terms of them in that marriage but A, and we know how Black people are. It's like, okay, well, he ain't hit her. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, he's disrespectful. He's a lot to deal with. Um, I couldn't deal with that shit. I couldn't be in a relationship. But because she's committed to it, I'm going to tell myself that if she like it, I love it. Right? When you have that married with the fact that this is a very prosperous couple. They are going to reach a lot of, they're going to make a lot of, progress. They're going to cover a lot of ground with the work that they do. People really want to be involved in that. So it's a lot of like, I wouldn't say that they necessarily turn a blind eye, but it's very much like until something horrible pops off, it's not my business. I'm just grateful that it ain't me. I'm, yeah. just grateful. I'm grateful that I ain't got to lay down with his ass kind of thing. I'm gonna go okay, ahead and so, stop there. <laughs> what I will say is, you know, I'm happy that the reading show, you know, like he he loved her, you know, he he does love her, excuse me. He's made progress, right? And um, 
I'm very happy to to know that you know they have a real and deep connection with each other. But mm-hmm. it's, it's it's almost giving me the energy of like he love her, but he could be a real asshole, right? Yes. He could be a real asshole. Like he doesn't do, uh, I guess, like the proper work to be an efficient husband sometimes. Mm-hmm. No, that's absolutely it. I, he's very very arrogant. Very arrogant, very tunnel visioned, very, well, if it's not about the goal, if it's not about, you know, the effort, then what are we talking about kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Um, He dismisses everybody's feelings. And that's what I got from that Knight of Swords, Queen of Wands combination. It's like, well, he, you know, of course he don't realize when he's doing it to her because he treats everybody this way. He will insult the fuck out of you and convince you that it's your fault for being insulted. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But now uh, that definitely did come come across. Like, I, I don't remember how many videos I, I want to say there was more than one where they were doing the interview about their relationship. And mm-hmm. that definitely came across in at least the one that I saw. I don't know if I watched the whole thing because I was just like, like, you know, I was one of those people in the corner kind of like, yo, like, yay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I definitely only watched one. And I honestly, I couldn't believe that people were still talking about it all this time later. But I guess I understand why now. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a beautiful couple, though. They are. They and they, are. Just, they just put out good music. They really do. They really do. I'm going to have to learn something more than that one song. But <laughs> they're a really, a really beautiful couple. Don't worry. I got you. I'll send you some. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. It will be a lot shorter than three months. Can't say when you'll see me next, but you guys will see me soon. Thank you for joining. Please take care. And until next time, bye. So fuel my fire, take me high. I'll be your liar too. Cause when we're here, there's nothing 